Hi everyone, I'm Trisha Clements and I am the Chief Fur Wrangler with MuttButts.com. I'm a social media manager, I specialize in pet businesses, hence the Mutt Butts, and also video. To tell you a little bit about myself, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I have two kids, you can see them right there, Reedy and Margie, and yes, those are family names, I'm from the South and they, my kids have family names. And I am a little bit obsessed with tiny houses, so if anyone likes talking about tiny houses, come and talk to me. And I kind of a little bit like the color purple, just a tad, <laughs> just a tad. Today, we are going to be talking about content, effective use of video for content for your blog. You need to consistently add content to your blog. There's numerous reasons, of course, that you need to do this. You need to, it establishes authority, credibility, helps build your brand. One thing when I talk about being consistent, I had this question before where somebody said, well, okay, consistent. I decided to blog every other week, but then I had a supplier and they gave a big discount and I want to offer a special for my customers, but I've already sent my, done my blog for the week and sent my newsletter out, so I can't do it. Like, no, that's not what I mean by consistent. Pick your schedule as far as if it's once a week, every other week, every day, once a month, and do that. If you've got something that comes up that's special that you want to do, by all means, add it in. <laughs> it's a, um, it, your, your content, your strategy, it's always, it can be ever-changing. If you've got something that comes up out of nowhere that you need to do and tell your customers, do it. But this consistency basically means don't decide you're going to do a blog every single day. Do it for six weeks and then MIA for six months. Yeah. That's what I mean by consistency. So for instance, I send out my newsletter every week so my clients and, and um, co potential customers know they're going to get something in their inbox every Tuesday morning from me. So that's what I'm talking about with consistency. So what you want to do with that is first start off by creating a marketing calendar. And I'm going to have a place for you all to get these slides so um, you don't need to take notes of everything that you see, just if you have one or two things, but I will give you a place to, to get these. Basically, you're going to want to do your marketing calendar for a full year. If it overwhelms you, start off with three months, but I really recommend getting to that year. And what I mean by that are broad topics. I'm not talking about writing 12 blog posts tomorrow. <laughs> Come up with your 12 general topics that you want to talk about. Put them on a calendar based on what's coming up. You know, what's in December? I don't remember. What, you know, what, what comes up and is through the flow of your business, what you need to focus on for that month. So I do a lot of pet businesses. So in the t summertime, it's all about, the, you know, getting the dogs out, playing, everything like that. So that's one of the things you need to do. And like I said, it's a live calendar. Something comes up, by all means, add it in there. It can always be changed. Um, if you've got something new that comes up, you've got a new product that you didn't know was going to come out when you started your calendar, you need to have, have that in your marketing calendar, so adjust it and put it in there. So you're going to have, it really helps you, oops, pre-plan so you're not doing last minute marketing. So when you're doing your marketing calendar, you're not going to wait till the end of your 90 day, like if you decide to do 90 days, you're not going to wait till the end and say, okay, now I need to plan for the next 90 days. And you're going to go ahead and start that early because your goal is to have your 12 months pre-planned. That's your, that's your goal of what you want to do. So you're going to want to lead towards that. And so for your marketing calendar, Everybody says, I don't know what topics. You can come up with a whole bunch of different topics for that. There are seasonal things that come up. There are events. If you are a, or you or a customer is a small business and they go out to different events, vendor events, the um, local farmer's market, tell them the, to, to talk about that. Put your event on Google My Business. Put your event on Google My Business as a post and put it on there as an event where it has a date so it will stay live on there until the date of the event and not just for seven days. 
Um, let's see, you have new products and services. You're gonna wanna make sure that you put that on there. Your promotions, your specials, holidays. So we all know the regular holidays on the calendar, but there's a place you can go called National Day Calendar. I get an email from them, I signed up for that, but when you sign up for that, you get it the day before and that's not much planning. Um, if you're just kind of looking for something different to do for your content, one thing you might want to do, so for instance today, it is National Soft Ice Cream Day. <laughs> They're off the wall, I'm telling you. <laughs> so what you might want to do is, so for, for I, I have a lot of pet businesses, I might say, oh, well, I'm going to go in there and do a blog post and talk about, you know, certain foods that dogs can't have or cats can't have, but here's a nice homemade recipe you could make for your dog for soft ice cream because dogs love that. So that's some way you could take something unusual like that and incorporate it. It just helps you come up with ideas. Um, so that's one good way. Now, the q and I, I skipped over that a minute because I've got, yes. Um, I, Q&A from your customers. Listen to your customers, what they're asking, what they're talking about. But then also, I, my next series of blog posts are all coming from everything I've heard from numerous small businesses where I see that they're having problem with their online identity and making sure that they're owning their online identity. So this is my next series. Yes, that's me in Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's the thing, it, it um, come up with different things like that. So that wasn't necessarily a question they had, they, the way they were talking, I knew they didn't understand, so I need to go out and have an informational blog and talk to them. And that's one good thing about just being informational. People will then come to you as a resource. If you're informational and telling, giving them good information, they're gonna come to you to find out all the other information that they're looking for. So that's a big key to be, have informational um, things as well. So, video, video, video. I, I love video, and I'm, most of this you all know, over 75%, and that goes up all, all, every day, of internet traffic is video. It helps build the know, like, and trust factor. It also, you want people to know you. They don't necessarily wanna know your business. They don't want to know, you know, your logo is a logo. They don't wanna sit there and look at your logo. They want to know you. So like, for instance, when I had this post up, I had people say, oh my gosh, is that really you? They're used to purple hair. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, that's me <laughs> in Snapchat. So you really want, they, they want to get to know you. That's one of the things a lot of times for social media, I'll tell my clients, unless you're like Coca-Cola, Nike, or Apple, you don't need to have your logo as your profile picture. You want to have you. Because, or if it's, you've got uh, several staff, have a, have a nice staff photo because people are going through and they want to get to know you like they know your, your business, they know who you are, that they connect with you. So that's really, really important that your audience can connect with you and that's one of the things that video does, helps with engagement. And if, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned, if you have questions, just raise your hand um, and I will definitely, oops, what did I do? Oops. Okay, so. <laughs> so PowerPoint is not my strong suit, and I will get back to this. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right one. Okay. All right. One thing that you need to do is know your customer, know where they are. For instance, millennials, they have the most power, buying power of any generation. So if you have any millennials in your customer base, you need to focus on them. <laughs> um, they love apps. Mobile shopping, of course, I kind of like that too. Um, social media, you want to know your customer, go to the platforms that they're on. A lot of people said, well, do I have to be on every single platform? Not necessarily, it's good to be on several platforms, but be the most active on the platform that your customers, potential customers, are most active on. Okay, so um, for had something I was going to add in here, and I don't remember where I was going to add it. Um, for video, what type, so you've got your, um, your type, what you're going to talk about, your topic, but then what types of videos? You can do informational, educational, how-to, 
problem solving behind the scenes. You can even do a tutorial. So I've done numerous tutorials on my rocket book. And if you don't know what a rocket book is, you must know what a rocket book is. You can go to that link and that will have um, all the information on the blogs that I've done. But I did like a full tutorial. So I relate it to my business because I find that it's something that helps me be more productive and stay organized. So that's really good for business. So I did a video tutorial because I love it so much. And I even had a question on one of my videos. So I had to send it to Rocketbook. They answered. I was like, oh, good customer support as well. <laughs> so, um, so that's really good to do tutorials on them as well. Now, this is where I wanted to talk about something else. Um, one thing that I get a question a lot is what size how, when I do a video, what size do I do? It really depends. If you are doing something for YouTube, it is a horizontal um, video. YouTube is a horizontal platform. And that means it's 920 by 1080. And what I like to do for my videos, I start them on YouTube. You don't have to do that. But I like to film them, and it really, a lot of it depends on the type of video, what you're doing in the video. So a lot of mine are informational. I'm there talking, because I like to talk. And so I'm there talking. So I'll do it vertical, and I'm not like right up in the, I kind of am. But I've got lots, you know, some extra space here behind me in the video. So what I'll do is I'll take that whole video, edit it for YouTube in that format, and then with my uh, editing video editing software, I will then go and change the format to square, 1080 by 1080. And one of the things about square is that's really good for Facebook and Instagram because it takes up, I think, 78% of your, your screen, whereas if you're just sharing a square video, it's just at the top, so they're more likely to see it. So I'll take it and just convert it. I don't do anything but just change the size and it chops the edges off. And then there's a new thing called IGTV, Instagram TV, if you're not familiar. It is basically the opposite of YouTube. It is 1080 by 920, 1920. So it is a vertical video. So what I do for that is I take the same video I just did in YouTube and I just chop it, chop the sides off so it's just like kind of me, it's, it's kind of, I'm a little bit in your face, but I'm like, I'm not going to redo and do four videos of the same thing. If you have time, you can do it, but I, to save time, that's how I do it. Um, so you can take one video and you can have it for, um, for YouTube, you can have it for Instagram, you can, one thing you need to remember is when you have your video on YouTube, uh, you need to, and I talk about this a little bit too, but make sure that you, when you have your YouTube video, YouTube's owned by Google. And Facebook and Google, you know, they fight, they're fighting over who's going to control video online. It used to be in the past when you, somebody shared a YouTube video on Facebook, you could actually watch the video as it played. Then all of a sudden you couldn't. Facebook says, we don't like this YouTube. <laughs> it's not Facebook, it's Google. So all you get is a link that takes you to YouTube. And because it's not keeping you on Facebook, unless you pay for an ad, they are not going to, you're gonna, not going to get as many views um, on that video. So what you need to do is make sure you put that video directly on Facebook and upload it to Facebook as well. So if you put it on YouTube, just upload it directly to Facebook. So that's, um, that's, that's kind of a different, you know, you have to see the, the, the companies that are fighting with each other. Utilize that, go to both places, see where your audience is and, and use that. Um, and uh, let's see, I talked about square, oh, and the, the um, length of the video. It depends on what type of video you're doing. So I, for my videos, typically do anywhere from three to eight minutes is, is what I like to do. Sometimes I do longer ones. So for instance, I did this awesome rocket book one, 
And no, I'm not a brand ambassador, although I'm going to have to talk to them about that because I talked to everybody about my rocket book. Um, when I did that, that was a longer video. It was, I don't know, 12, 15 minutes. And that's long for me because I want to, you know, keep people's attention on there. Um, but it was a tutorial. So it, it needed the time to get in and give the information. But generally, if you're doing something that's going to go on YouTube like that, Facebook that's going to be informational, going to go on your blog, three to eight minutes, you know, four or five minutes is probably a really good spot to do. Uh, if you're doing um, something like a, you can take your video and take clips out of it, and then you can um, do short, like, little 20, 30 second clips out of your video of like something you're talking about and then lead them to the full video. So that's something that is, um, that is good. You can take your video and reuse it numerous places. Okay. And which is what it, this slide is about. So your video, what are you using it for? You're using it for content. You don't just create your video and say my video's done, bye. You're going to use it for your blog, which is what I'm going to be talking about, social media posts, of course. Your newsletter, put it in your newsletter. Um, put a link to it, whether you're going to do, um, whether, and it depends on as far as whether you want your people going to your YouTube channel or your Facebook page. Decide where you want them to go, and in the newsletter, put that link there um, to your video uh, in your newsletter. Uh, video minis, which I was just talked about, that's just kind of my term for them because they're little short clips. And they're kind of just like informational um, ads. You can use them also as well as a short informational ad um, when you're doing um, Facebook marketing and ads as well. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Um, so you were just saying in your newsletter, put the link mm -hmm. to Facebook or whatever. Yeah. If you're putting your video in your blog post, mm -hmm. would you not just send it back to your blog? I do that as well. So in my newsletter, because some people, they just want to see that video. And if it's not in the newsletter, they may just not even look at it. And so I put in my, my newsletter, I put, I don't know, maybe two paragraphs, and they're not long paragraphs, summarizing what I talk about in my blog. And I have with a link to the blog. Then I also have in there, um, where, and it's in the way, it will, I use MailChimp, but I'm sure some of the others are very similar. Like if you put that link, it kind of it shows the preview of the video where they can click it and go. But I like to give people the option to do to either see it right there or read it, because um, because you've got people who want to do one or the other, and it just depends on each person. Do you put the transcript of the video in your blog? Yes, that's what I'm getting to. Yes, yes. No, that's okay. No, that's 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 really really important um, is doing that. You can use your, um, your, blog, your video content. You can create checklists from it. Checklists, if I can speak. Um, audio, podcasts, online ads, ebooks, all kinds of things that you can create from that video. Ebooks, a free a download, which reminds me I have Lead Magnet. So I'm going to pass this little cup around, and it glows. They didn't have purple, pink was close. So you can put your business card in here. If you don't have a business card, put a paper with your name, your phone number, and your address. I'm going to be doing a drawing for a 30-minute video consult with me, and it is going to be on any topic you want. It doesn't necessarily need to be on this. So I'll pass it around, and you all can put that in. I'll be doing a drawing at the end. There's, and again, there's so much more you can do with your video. I'm, so much more. You, could, you, there's just, you can just name things. You can go online and get checklists of what you can do with your video. But um, these are just kind of a sampling of different things that I like to do. Okay. Okay, now, here we get, we're getting to it, Judy. Tr the key for your video is to transcribe it or have it transcribed. 85% of all video on Facebook is watched with the sound off. If you want people to know what you're talking about, you need to have it transcribed. And a lot of that is people scrolling through their news feed and they're going through and deciding whether they're going to stop on a video. Well, if, they, if you're there and they don't know what you're talking about, they're going to keep scrolling. 
If they see a few things on there, they may, they'll say, oh, okay, what is this? But if you have the sound, if the sound is off, um, they are going to just keep scrolling. They, they're not interested. Um, it makes it searchable for SEO. So for instance, if anyone has Google Voice like I do, that's when you get a phone call and it transcribes your voicemail and emails it to you. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I understand exactly what this says. Sometimes I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh? Who called and what do they want? Um, so if you're doing your video, you want Google to know what you're saying. You're using keywords in there, which you need to do. You want Google to get the keywords right. Um, because the way I, I, you know, I have a little bit of a southern twang. I can talk fast, talk slow. I, you know, it just depends on the situation. And I, it, it doesn't pick everything up that I say properly. You want Google to know what you're saying, so have it transcribed. It helps with the hearing impaired. Also, um, I don't know anyone who does this, but I'm sure there are employees that sit at work with the sound off, and they're going through Facebook and watching videos with the sound off so nobody hears it. But So then they'll be able to watch it and know what you're saying. I don't know anybody that knows that, but maybe you do. The, so you have two ways of transcribing your video. The first is a DIY. That's very labor intensive. I've done it for a couple of videos, and then I said, no, no, to heck with that. But, um, but if you're just getting started and you want to try it, I did a um, YouTube video on it, muttbutts.com slash free transcription, and um, that will take you there to it, to that YouTube video. What I like to do is use a company called Go Transcript. It's, I think the cheapest is like 72, 73 cents a minute. So it depends on how long your video is and also how quickly you want the turnaround to be. I think they can get it like within six to 12 hours. I'm not, or six, I don't know. But I usually try to have it more time because it's less expensive. And usually they, even if I say I want it in three days, they'll get it to me within 12 hours. But, um, but that's not always the case. Um, go transcript. Um, and that's just a place that I like to go to get it transcribed there. It's really inexpensive and they do a really good job of it. And um, also, let me see, one of the main things, if you use GoTranscript or another company, make sure you get your Word document. So with GoTranscript, that's what I like about them. There's no extra charge for it. They send you your SRT file, don't know what that stands for. All I know is that's your transcription file. Don't ask me this technical stuff. SRT is your, your captions. And um, so basically, they also send you a full Word document. So you could get the SRT file and open it to create your blog, but it's got all of the, the time stamping in there. And you have to delete all that. No, they, send, they don't charge any extra. They send you the Word document. So that's what I really like about it. And that's what you're going to use to create your blog. You're going to use your SRT file on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, upload your video, upload your SRT file for your captions. You go to Facebook, do it a little bit different. It's not very hard. You're going to change the SRT to this extension. And, and like I said, you're going to get these, um, these slides, but it's Instead of .srt, it's .en underscore us .srt. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and, but you, if you go to Facebook and upload the .srt file, it'll say, we don't recognize your SRT file because it doesn't end in this. So it, it'll be right there for you when you try to do it. I don't know why Facebook is like that. Maybe they just want to be different than YouTube. I don't know. But that's basically um, what you need to do when you're uploading your captions once you've got them created. The right one. Yeah, okay. So before you do any, once you've got your captions, before you upload them, you need to make sure you have your metadata. This is getting a little bit technical for me. Like I say, I like to let others do a lot of the technical stuff, but basically it's for your SEO for your video. You're going to want to make sure, so this is how you do it. Um, you're going to right click the file, properties, details, descriptions. Fill out everything there in the descriptions. Your title and subtitle are going to be the same. You're going to have your main keyword in that title and subtitle. Make sure your keyword is in there. Um, 
tags. Here's the thing, I feel like every platform calls, is tag means something different. In this specific thing, your keywords need to go here. Your main keyword and your secondary keywords needs to go here in the tags, and they're separated by semicolons. So it'll kind of show you that when you start putting them in. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry, this is, um, this is the metadata on your video file. Uh, okay. Yeah, on your video file. And, because um, you'll just go to your, um, your Explorer, I'm sorry, I'm like seeing it in my head. You go to your Explorer and find your file and then right click on your file and go to Properties, Details, Descriptions. Um, of course, there is a place on there to star your video. I have f all five star videos. <laughs> I don't know what you all have, but they should certainly be five star videos. So I don't know if that does anything, but I five star my videos. Um, there is a section for comments. Put one or two um, sentence description. Just really be concise about what it's about. That's really for SEO purposes, just your main thing about what it's about. It could even be um, your meta title, I believe, for your blog. Make it short, concise, to the point, and um, make sure you have your keyword in there. Um, here is a big tip that I found out by accident. So let's say you're, you've done a Facebook Live. And, and now this works only on your business page, not your profile. So you've done a Facebook Live, you finish, you say, that was the best Facebook Live ever. I wish that like more people could see it, but it doesn't have transcriptions. Da -da. You can grab that file, you can create a transcript from it. Get either do a DIY approach or send it off and have it transcribed. And get that transcription file. Go in to your Facebook Live, click edit the post, and upload your transcript file to your Facebook Live that you finished. Um, that way, and these, I would not do this on every Facebook Live. I would only do it on ones that you really um, not ones that like just ramble on for a long time, because I know you have people asking questions and you can repeat the same things, but ones that are really good, concise, and, and really to the point, and really informative. Um, you can do that, and then of course, you know, on Facebook, you can continue to share that later on, and a lot of times, Facebook Live, they will get more views in the replay. So that's why this is really important. You can also um, go in, add a title to that, add tags, which are your keywords, um, add tags to it. You can add a thumbnail if you want to, which is the main image that shows up. Um, like on YouTube, there's a main image and before you play it. So that's something that you'll definitely, if you have a really, really good Facebook Live, want to do is go ahead and do the transcript file on that. So like I said, your blog. You're using your video to create your blog. What you're going to do is you're going to take that Word document that you got, if you did go transcript or something like that, or if you did it yourself, you can download your SRT file from YouTube, and then you're gonna have to go in and play with it a lot. That's why I said the free way to do it is very labor intensive, but you can start off if that's how you wanna do it. Um, for your blog, of course, you've got your keywords, the same ones you use for your video, and you're gonna take um, on your blog, I like to embed my video at the top of my blog. You can, it depends on how you want to do it. Some people prefer the middle, wherever, but I like to do it at the top. Wherever your audience is, that, or, or it depends. If, if, that's, if your audience is on YouTube and that's where you want to send people, you can put the YouTube embed. Uh, if you maybe have a great YouTube audience and you want to pe move people to Instagram, put your IGTV embed code there. So wherever you either uh, your audience is or maybe you want more of an audience, that's what you'll use. The reason you want to embed instead of upload the video for several reasons. Videos are large and your host isn't going to like you after a while. Um, another thing is when you put it, when you embed it instead of just uploading it, when people come to your website and watch that video there, you're going to get the watches on YouTube, on Facebook, on IGTV. That's going to show up for that, those social media channels. So, um, so, they, so somebody doesn't have to be on Facebook to, to watch that video. If you've embedded it, they're watching it and Facebook knows that because you've embedded it. You're going to take your blog, uh, your Word document, you're going to optimize it for written content. That's just headings, links, images, a click to tweet if you like to do that. This is really, really important. So we talk a lot differently than we write. 
we, I don't have all this going on in my, in my, um, my blog. Also, though, like, so for instance, I have a friend that has a nonprofit, and I keep telling her, she, she does, these are more Facebook posts, but she writes like 600 words. No spaces, no, or no, no paragraphs. And she's like, a couple days later, did you see, I wrote, I wrote this thing on Facebook, and I, I said, I saw the post. She's like, yeah, and it said that, I said, no, no, I saw the post. I didn't read that thing. I was like, are you kidding me? And she's like, well, but it said it was, it was important. And then, did you see the part that said, I said, I did not read it. <laughs> That's one thing, headings, subheadings, you've got to make it readable. If I go to a page that has 600 words, no, I'm just, I'm gone. You want to make sure you've got everything so that it's, it's appealing to the eye to grab and, and get to. So you, um, you've got your headings, your subheadings. Even if you've got bullet points you can add in there, things like that are really, really important to keep people on and reading and interested. And if you don't have it, I might see it, but I'm not reading that mess. <laughs> Uh, so that's extremely important is to make sure that you optimize it for your blog uh, and embed your video in it. Um, like I said earlier, the newsletter, I include the video link, either Facebook or YouTube, one or two paragraphs, a link to the blog, really important, you can have, it just depends on, on what your audience, what, what you, they're used to as far as what you put in your newsletter. Okay, and then for when you have your video go live, now what I mean by that is when you upload your video to YouTube or to Facebook, it doesn't have to go live immediately. If you're sitting there at midnight finishing it up, I know none of y'all stay up that late working, but if you finish it at that time, you may not want it to go live then because you might want it to go live when everybody else comes online the next day for the most amount of um, boost in the first hour. So I like to schedule them. On YouTube, there's a way to schedule your videos. So there's just a drop down thing, unlisted, um, private, and then scheduled. So make sure you schedule your video to go live when you want it to go live. Make sure you, on Facebook, you can do the same thing with your videos, schedule them, and that's on your page. On your personal profile, uh, you can't do that. They, they don't let you do that. You can also make sure that you tell people you have a new blog, a new video. You can use IFTTT or Zapier, um, so whenever you have a new blog post, that shoots out and tells everybody to whatever social media you want to. Um, the different clips, so you've got, let's say, a six minute video. Take a little 10, 30 second clip out of it and post it on there and you've got your little, and then it's easy to go in and kind of change and add, just do a short little transcription for that or sometimes I don't even do it, but you really should have transcription. Um, and have that clip lead to the larger video because that one little sound bite, that might be something that grabs their attention to get them to want to read the full blog post or see the full video. You can do uh, stories on Facebook or Instagram, share it to those. Your ads are promotion, your Facebook ads. Using short clips like that is really good for Facebook ads. And if you have evergreen content that you've done, make sure you schedule it out. Don't just share it once and that's done. You've spent a lot of time on the video, editing, getting it done, writing your blog. You're not gonna share it one time and say bye. You're gonna share, share, share. So set it up on something. I like something called missing letter, but then that's, that's just a neat little thing that I like to use for blog posts specifically. Um, but of course you can do it on whatever, your Buffer and um, Hootsuite and all of those. Um, any of that works well. Um, but one thing to remember, your end goal for social media is not to just get on there and, and have fun for business. It's fun for some people, but if you're a business and you're on there, your end goal is to drive them to your site and get a sale. That's what you want, you want a sale. Now, by that, I don't mean every time someone comes there, they, they have to make a sale. You, some of them will, but others, you wanna lead them there to maybe get on your email list so they'll know the next time you have a blog. You'll want to send them to a freebie so they'll get on your email list. But something that you want to make sure that you're doing that you're not just putting posts out there, because we can just put posts out there all day and not get any return on it. So the main goal of social media that you need to focus on is to 
get sales in the end, whether it's right now or a month from now, get them on your email list, which you own, because you don't own Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. If you do, why are you listening to me? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, um, so those are really, really important. Okay. Da -da -da, yeah, I talked about that. Okay. Um, and that goes along with your call to action. Basically, if you're doing a live stream and even your videos, see, in every one of my videos at the end, I'll have a question. So, for instance, I was talking about my rocket book. And in that video, I said, I was t talking about all these new features. They have this new feature where it's OCR technology and it can read some of the writing and come up with your title. And at the end, I'm like, so do you all like this technology? Is there something new you would want to see from them? And of course, now Rocketbook has seen my YouTube video. So I'm like, look at these comments. This is what people want to see. <laughs> so, but, um, but always ask for a comment on something. Um, on you know what their thoughts are on it, what their ideas are on it, if they have anything different um, that they've come up with, uh, always ask for that. If you've got something, you may want to even even if you're asking for, you're like I can't come up with anything. Just ask for a, a one-word comment. If you do this, you know, type yes. If you don't, just say what are you talking about. Just you know, like a little one or two-word comment is good as well because that also helps engagement online. Make sure you're sending them, like I said before, to your lead magnet or a landing page for your product or service. So it doesn't necessarily need to always lead back to your blog or, or anything. If you've got a landing page for your product or service, make sure you're leading them back to it. On Facebook, if someone, if you've got a post and people are going in and liking the post, any type of like, heart, whatever, Make sure you go back in and are checking frequently those posts. When some, you can click on that post and see if people don't like your page, you can invite them from that. So if you've got lots of people who have liked a post, you can go in there and say, oh, well, these three people don't like my page. I want them to like my page. They've already liked one thing. Maybe they'll like more stuff. And it'll send, Facebook will send them a thing and invite them to like your page. So make sure you check um, and do that for Facebook. So this is just one example of like a little video mini, but I don't know if it's going to, oh. Um, and the sound's not very high. But anyway, this was just something that um, I worked on with a client and created. Um, I'm trying to see what time it is. Okay, we've got a few more minutes. Um, and this is just like a little video mini that would then lead to the website for a sale. Um, and just kind of has all kinds of different things. And like I said, when I do the little video minis that I share on Facebook that lead them places, I like to have it under 30 seconds, just because people's attention span, you gotta keep them there and get them to where they're going. Okay. Now, I've gone through all the ways you're gonna add your content, you're gonna add your video, you're gonna write your blog. The main thing you need to remember is prepare. Don't get to the next month, the night before, my, my blog's due tomorrow. No, no, no. Prepare, 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 and done is better than perfect any day. You give me a camera, the only thing I'm going to need is two seconds to put this lipstick on. That I will not go on, 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 on camera without. The rest of it, I don't have anything else on. Lipstick, I got lipstick on. Um, and that's one thing I kind of know. It's like a, you won't see me usually with that. If I don't have it on, something's wrong. Um, so use video, just do it. I will tell you that I started in 2015 when I was doing video. I hated video. I could not get through hardly getting my name out before stopping and editing. And so you just have to practice and do it. Just, just do it. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Um, and one good place to do it is Facebook Live, uh, especially if you're on your personal profile. This doesn't work for pages. You can go on and do um, change the settings, do it private where you're just talking just to get used to the camera live and no one sees it. 
you can add a couple of friends. Say, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. You're the only one that I'm going to put on there. You know, let me know how, what you think, what I'm, what I'm doing right and wrong. So those are just some things, to, tips to help you with that. And, okay. So here's the thing. So video checklist, muttbutts.com slash video checklist. This, oh. so that's my Margie girl. <laughs> um, so that's where you're going to get, and let's see, I listed here, um, a checklist, go to muttbutts.com slash video checklist. You are going to get this slide presentation. Of course, the video is not going to come up, sorry. Margie's will be upset. Bef it's going to give tips before you hit record, when you hit record, after you hit record, and also the slide presentation. So you're going to get all those tips in that if you go to muttbutts.com slash video checklist. Now, you might notice, yes, Margie loves chasing her squirrels, but more importantly, she loves hamming it up for the camera, as you can see. She's my baby girl. Um, mutt butts. Our butt only has one T in it because they might be butts, but they are 100% loved. So just remember that when you write that on there. And so that's like I said, one thing about social media, you need to be the squirrel. You know how dogs, they get squirrels? They see a, they're, just, they're doing something, they see a squirrel and that's it. That's what you need to be on social media. You need to be that squirrel, the thing that draws their attention away and keeps it. You know how you get squirreled online, something draws your attention in and you're gone for hours. That's what you need to be online. <laughs> so again, this is the um, free video checklist, and I think that that is, yeah, that's the last of it. The free video checklist that I have, and I want to make sure that I didn't have, okay. Any questions? Yes. I believe so. I haven't done that before, but where you go in and edit, you can add the title, you can add things, and there may be. I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can, because when you go in and edit it and you add the tags, there's some things on there, and I believe that that's something on there, and I haven't done it yet, but I need to. Yeah. So you're obviously selling a service. Do you also have things like products for sale on your site? or Physical products? Um, no. I, I Years ago I did, but I don't. So Mm -hmm. Come back so they'll love you, and then if they need you, they'll call. Yes. It's much the same as your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm a social media manager, and one of the things, you know, I create the content to talk to <coughs> primarily small, medium sized businesses, um, give them tips, so then they come to me to then, because mm -hmm. it it's time consuming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, on, you were talking about transcribing a Facebook Live video. Mm -hmm. Do you? send the transcription people the link or do you have to download that okay. video? Okay, and I'm ways? supposed to be repeating these questions, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it was about transcription. If I send it, if I have like the company go transcript, um, do it, do I have to send them the whole video, the link or what? They will, uh, ha their two, you can upload it to them, the whole video, or like I have a Dropbox, you can put the Dropbox video in there. You can put, if you have it set on unlisted already in YouTube, you can send them that link. I'm talking specifically about Facebook Live videos. Like how do you get that to the transcript? Because they're not hard, they're not easy to download. Yes, um, you, I believe you can, I have not tried that yet. I typically go in and download them. I find a way to download them. But um, you can, <laughs> um, yeah, it, but you can, um, I believe there's a way, because the main thing is it has to be open for others to see. So like, for instance, if you were on YouTube and you had your video set to private, they're not going to be able to get it. But if you have it unlisted, which is what you want originally until you're ready to go live, unlisted, um, we'll get that. So I believe if you've got your Facebook Live video, you should be able to send them the link. I haven't sent it to them, though. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, so the question, question is about the length of the video, if it's written content, is it going to be longer than, than the video is? Um, that's one of the things you'll get in the before you hit record, what you need to do. A lot of that is, I tell you, write bullet points. You do, so before you do your video, you do not want to write it out because you will sit there and read. 
I don't care what some how good I've written them out before and I've pitched it and started over you so the best thing to do is just do bullet points and it'll kind of end up right if you you know your subject you're going to talk about it just do your bullet points and make sure you hit all your bullet points then when you get get it back and do the written you can adjust it it doesn't have that's one thing too your blog doesn't have to exactly match what you say if you're like oh i didn't talk about this add it in your blog it doesn't have to be on the video <coughs> it's good for it to be on there but if there's something that just came up and you're like well put it in the the blog so uh-huh So um, people are using their cell phones more and more and more. And it shows up more, you get more screen time with the square video if, um, than you do with horizontal. Because if you're looking at a video, you're going to get the square is going to cover this much, the horizontal is just going to be at the top here. You want as much as you can get on that screen. You want them to see as much of you as you can. So, um, so that's why it takes up more of the screen and they can, it makes it more visible to them. So, do you have a question? Um, yeah, how much time do you spend on this video? Um, so when I do a video, it really depends. It dep one thing that really makes a difference is how much I've prepared my video before I shoot it. Because sometimes I might get on there and just like, and I'm like, I, I wasn't prepared. So there's more editing to it. So I might spend like three or four hours, like in total. But that's like that's not three and four hours just sitting there. That's like an hour, you know, half hour doing this, then that, then ha then coming and back. What's your schedule? How often do you do it? So right now I'm doing videos every other week. Mm -hmm. And one thing is um, I have done the um, pretty much what I do now is YouTube, and I embed that in the top of my blog. But I'm going to be changing up just to see how it works, and I'm going to start doing a couple of Facebook Lives and embedding those in the top of my blog and using that kind of substituting. You know, one week I'll do a YouTube, the next week a Facebook Live, just to see what happens. You know, and test is it out. Your primary source of marketing, so you don't go out and like knock on people's doors and things. Like yeah, that. pretty much. I mean, I that's one thing I I do go to to networking groups, but I go to less and less, and it's like, and I see people. I'm like, oh, I need to go out and just see you guys. Not necessarily for network, but you know, to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, connection. Yeah, I, I blog every week, and I think that when people say, "I hate marketing," I mean that if you do this, yeah, like, I know you're successful yeah. at it. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, so I, I'm wondering how it is time consuming. It is. It's true, a less painful way than to have to go do the dish. It is. It is, and video is where it's at. That's what people want to see. Yes. Um, you had music in that. Mm -hmm. So for music, there are any number of places you c there is. Um, <coughs> YouTube has something which you need to make sure to do with YouTube is make sure it says not non-attributed or not no attribution required, meaning that you're not required to to put anything on there. Some of them you do, and if that's the case, you need to make sure you do it and you do it right. I don't have time to figure all that stuff out, and it's just like little background stuff. Now, um, there are some places that you can go and sign up for like a monthly service and get certain, because it is limited. You're, it's, the YouTube is very limited, so if you want to do something more specialized, you might want to go to a place and you know pay for some, some background music that's specifically what you want because I've got a company that um, that I'm working with now and in some of the audio I have I'm like now I'm gonna have to go figure something else out mm -hmm. so that's something I'll be doing soon yes Camera hardware do you use? yes oh I brought this so well this is my new note 8 I used to use my Samsung s7 but it's in the bottom of the Chattahoochee somewhere so I don't use that anymore but <laughs> A cell phone, you can, that's one thing about this video, y'all. Do not go out and say, I can't record a video until I have $500 worth of equipment. Oh, oops. But y'all have cell phones now. Don't tell me you don't have a cell phone already. You might have spent $500, but you already had this. So basically, you've got your cell phone. Now, one thing um, that I do, I meant to pull this out. In, the only thing I would say make sure you invest in is $20 tripod, good tripod. Um, if you're doing video, if you're holding it, if you think you're steady, you're not. Get it, 
and, and one, uh, just a good one. And I've got a link on there to all of this. If you go to the, my video checklist, I have a link that, um, that talks about this. This is a really good one, $20, Archon mounts. I love it. The other thing is you can get, this isn't a requirement, but it, well, here, it's a lavalier. Oops, I'm touching it, and they're probably going to fuss at me. I have a little 20-something dollar lavalier that I use, and it hooks into the phone. I recommend that a lot if you're doing videos like outside and it's windy, if there's a lot of people around. I notice that when I do my videos and if I'm inside and there's nothing going on, I forget to put it on. I'm like, I kind of pay for this thing, put it on, but I forget. So, um, but the main thing is if you're somewhere where there's lots of background noise, that's important. What do you edit them with? Editing software for your video. So, I used to years ago use something called. Movie Maker, I think I talked to somebody the other day about it. It's, a, it, it's no longer available, and I'm really upset because while I don't, didn't use it anymore, it's a good, easy starting software. It was from Microsoft, and they discontinued it. So what I recommend is I use something called Shotcut, S-H-O-T-C-U-T, and it's a little more advanced. I'm, I'm glad I had. <laughs> Um, movie maker to start with because it kind of gave me a getting started phase um, but I basically went and looked at YouTube videos and learned how to use it and I use that when I say I crop my videos it's really not that hard if you go in and spend you know um, an afternoon pull up some YouTube videos on it you can learn the, the specific things iMovie? so I don't use iMovie because I don't have iPhone or Mac but I do hear that that's really easy. So if you have that, if you have a Mac or anything, use iMovie. Um, but with Shotcut, so I found it very easy. Like I said, I do the videos for YouTube that are horizontal, and then I will go in and crop them later to do the vertical and the square. Shotcut's really easy. I just go in, and change the setting, and say, okay, now download it. And so it makes it really easy to change the sizing of it. So yeah. <coughs> Any more questions? Okay, and where did my little flashing bottle thingy go? Anyone? Uh-oh, what happened? Some, are y'all hiding it? It was flashing for you. <laughs> it was flashing, come on. Okay, any other questions? I think we got some more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more? Anybody else that I didn't get? Last call. Last call. <laughs> okay. Okay. Making my milkshake. All right. Okay. <coughs> oh, no, don't do me. I can get it on your own. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Moon and Company. And now I need my, okay, <laughs> Anne, okay, so I have something for you, Anne. So I've got my little Mud Buds logo, and on the back I have a place for you to go for, to sign up for your video chat, videochatwithtricia.com. There'll be a link on there. Thank you. Thank you all so much. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be here for the rest of the afternoon, or you all know how to reach me. Thank you.